Have you ever wondered about the differences between pink, purple, orange, sapphire and ruby? These stunning gemstones, each with their own unique hues and characteristics, are more than just eye candy. They are the result of nature's alchemy, a dance of light and mineral that takes millions of years to perfect. Today, we're going to embark on a journey, a journey that will take us deep into the heart of these gems, revealing their secrets and illuminating their differences. We will explore the vibrant world of rubies, the king of gemstones, and then dive into the color spectrum of pinkish red rubies. From there, we'll uncover the unique mix that makes up the Pad Paradsha sapphires, the rarest of all sapphires. And finally, we'll discuss how the Gemological Institute of America classifies these gems and the range of hues from purple to orange red. So stay tuned as we delve deeper into the fascinating world of these gemstones. Let's start with rubies, the vibrant red gemstones that have been treasured for centuries. These gems, steeped in history and lore, are primarily red in color, but it's the subtle variations in hue that make each ruby unique. Just like a fingerprint, no two rubies are exactly the same. The color of a ruby should be evenly distributed, with no uneven color spots. This even distribution of color reflects the light in the most beautiful way giving the ruby its iconic fiery glow. But what about those rubies that aren't the classic red we all know and love? Natural rubies can have hints of other colors, including pink, purple, and even orange. These secondary hues, while not as prized as the pure, vibrant red, still add a unique charm to the stone. They make the ruby more than just a gem. They turn it into a piece of art, a testament to nature's creativity. Speaking of prized rubies, the ones considered most valuable are those that are pure, vibrant red without any secondary hues. These rubies are the epitome of passion and romance, their intense color symbolizing love and vitality. Their captivating red hue is so sought after that it has its own name, pigeon blood. Now you might be wondering, can a ruby be pinkish red? Well, the answer isn't as straightforward as you might think. When the purplish traces in a ruby are removed, the gem's tone is lightened. Sometimes this lightening process is so intense that the gem no longer qualifies as a ruby. However, the range of ruby color is wide enough that a very pink ruby is indeed possible. This variety in color is part of what makes rubies so fascinating. So can a ruby be pinkish red? The answer is a resounding yes. But remember, the beauty of a gemstone lies not just in its color, but in its uniqueness. Each ruby tells a story, its hues and tones a reflection of its journey from the earth to your hands. And that, my friends, is the true magic of rubies. So can a ruby be pinkish red? Let's find out in the next segment. Is a very pink ruby possible, you might ask? Indeed, the world of rubies is more varied than one might initially imagine. The color of a ruby is a key determinant of its identity, but this color is not always a uniform, singular shade of red. The tone of a ruby can change quite dramatically with the removal of purplish traces. This process can lighten the gem's tone, sometimes to such an extent that it no longer qualifies as a ruby. It's an intriguing balance. The purplish traces that can detract from the ruby's value can also be the very element that solidifies its ruby status. Yet despite these restrictions, the color range of rubies is wide and diverse. This spectrum is generous enough to accommodate those gems that lean more towards pink than the typical red. So yes, a very pink ruby is not just a figment of the imagination, but a reality in the gemstone world. It's a fascinating journey of color transformation where the lines between different shades are blurred. A ruby's journey from its raw, unprocessed state to its final, polished form is a dance of color and light. Each step in this process can subtly alter the gem's hue, taking it from a deep purplish red to a lighter pinkish hue. This color transformation is not just about aesthetics. It's about the very identity of the gem. The final hue, whether it leans more towards the traditional red or ventures into the pink spectrum, determines whether the gem is classified as a ruby or ventures into the territory of pink sapphires. So, a very pink ruby is not only possible, but also a testament to the wide-ranging spectrum of this king of gemstones. It's a reminder of the delicate balance between color and identity, 
in the world of rubies, where even the slightest shift in hue can redefine the gem's classification. Now that we've explored the ruby spectrum, let's move on to the rarest of sapphires. Enter the world of Padparadsha sapphires, the rarest of sapphires. Imagine stumbling upon a gem that's not just rare, but so unique and striking in its beauty that it eclipses almost all other colored stones. Yes, we're talking about the elusive Padparadsha sapphires. These gems are like rare butterflies, seldom seen, but always remembered for their breathtaking allure. What sets Padparadsha sapphires apart is their distinctive color blend. Picture a sunset, the moment when the sky is painted with an enchanting mix of pink and orange. That is the color of a Padparadsha sapphire. This unique mix of pink and orange sets them apart from their sapphire siblings and indeed from most other gemstones. These sapphires are so rare that they remain unknown to many. But once discovered, they often become an absolute favorite among gem enthusiasts and collectors. Their mesmerizing color, coupled with their rarity, makes them a coveted treasure in the world of gemstones. But what's in a name? The term Padparadsha is derived from the Sinhalese word for aquatic lotus blossom, which shares the same captivating pinkish-orange hue. Just like the lotus, the beauty of these sapphires unfolds gradually, revealing their true charm only upon closer examination. However, finding a true Padparadsha sapphire is no easy task. The precise blend of pink and orange can vary, and opinions often differ on what constitutes the perfect Padparadsha hue. But when that perfect balance is struck, the resulting gemstone is nothing short of spectacular. Padparadsha sapphires, with their unique mix of pink and orange, are a testament to nature's artistry. Each stone is a masterpiece, encapsulating the warmth of a sunset and the allure of a lotus blossom. Owning a Padparadsha sapphire is like owning a piece of the sunset, a slice of nature's most enchanting hour. So, how does the Gemological Institute of America classify these gems? Let's find out. The Gemological Institute of America has its own criteria for classifying gemstones. Now, if we delve into these criteria, we find that the color of a gemstone plays a pivotal role in its classification. The GIA, as it's commonly known, takes into account the dominant hue of a corundum gem to distinguish it as either a ruby or a sapphire. Can you imagine that the difference between a ruby and a sapphire essentially boils down to the dominant color? Well, that's what the GIA asserts. According to its guidelines, only those corundum gems that exhibit a dominant red hue are classified as rubies. This means that the rich, fiery red gemstone we all know and love as a ruby is so named because of its principal hue. But what about those corundum gems that aren't dominantly red? Where do they fit into the spectrum? The answer is simple. All corundum gems that do not exhibit a dominant red hue are classified as sapphires by the GIA. This broad classification encompasses a range of beautiful gemstones, each with its unique charm and allure, from the deep blues to the vibrant yellows, and even the enchanting Padparadsha sapphire with its unique mix of pink and orange. It's fascinating to realize that the division between a ruby and a sapphire is largely a matter of color. But remember, it's not just any color, but the dominant hue that determines the classification. So a ruby isn't just red, it's dominantly red. And a sapphire isn't just blue or yellow or pink or orange. It could be any color as long as it's not dominantly red. With this knowledge, let's examine the hue range of rubies and sapphires. If we consider the vast palette of nature's colors, we can start to appreciate the subtle variations and nuances that make each of these gemstones unique. Whether it's the intense red of a ruby or the diverse hues of sapphires, the world of gemstones is a colorful spectacle, a testament to nature's artistic prowess. The hue of rubies and sapphires ranges from strong purple to intense red to an orange red. As we delve deeper into the world of gemstones, we encounter a fascinating spectrum of color. Rubies and sapphires in particular display a myriad of hues, from the deepest purples to the most vibrant reds, and even to the warm tones of orange red. Let's talk about tone and saturation. Tone refers to the depth of a gemstone's color, ranging from very light to very dark. Saturation, on the other hand, speaks to the intensity of a gemstone's color, from dull to vivid. 
When it comes to rubies and sapphires, the tone can be anywhere from medium to dark. And the saturation can stretch from a vivid, intense color to a low saturation with darker tones. Now, here's an interesting fact. The color of these gemstones is largely due to the presence of chromium. This element gives them their distinguishing red color. However, if the chromium generated color saturation is not sufficient to create a red color perception, the gemstone takes on a different hue. The stone appears pink and thus it becomes a pink sapphire, not a ruby. So you see, the difference between a ruby and a pink sapphire is not just a matter of name or classification. It's a matter of chemistry, of elements interacting under the Earth's crust over millions of years to form these breathtaking gemstones. Just imagine, the ruby or sapphire you hold in your hand has been through an incredible journey, changing and transforming over time. It's more than just a gemstone. It's a testament to the awe-inspiring forces of nature. And remember, whether it's a ruby with its regal red or a sapphire in its various hues, each gemstone carries its own unique charm and allure. Each gemstone tells a story, a story that is millions of years in the making. As we conclude, let's consider some important factors to look out for when choosing between these dazzling gemstones. When choosing your gemstone, there are several factors to consider. Inclusions, color and weight are three of the most critical elements in this decision-making process. Let's delve into them. Inclusions are characteristics enclosed within a gem or reaching its surface from the interior. They might be tiny crystals, growth lines or gas bubbles. While inclusions are often seen as flaws, in some instances, they can also increase the value of a gemstone. For instance, those found in flux-grown or flame-fusion gems can rival the beauty and value of natural ones. Some inclusions are so intricate, so ravishingly beautiful, they are highly sought after, transforming what could have been seen as a blemish into a distinguishing, desirable feature. Moving on to color, it's the first thing most people notice in a gemstone. The color should be evenly distributed without any uneven color spots. Rubies, for instance, are primarily red, but their hue can vary slightly with hints of other colors, such as pink, purple, or orange. The most prized rubies are those with a pure, vibrant red without these secondary hues. In the case of Padparaccia sapphires, their unique mix of pink and orange sets them apart, making them one of the most sought after gemstones. Lastly, weight is an essential factor in choosing a gemstone, but it's not just about size. Gemstones are weighed in carats, and while larger gems are often more valuable, the gem's quality and color significantly influence its worth. So, a smaller gem of exceptional quality can be worth much more than a larger, lesser quality gem. In conclusion, when choosing your gemstone, remember that inclusions can be beautiful, color is paramount, and weight is not the only measure of value. Each gemstone is unique, with its own story to tell, captured in its inclusions, color and weight. We hope this has helped you understand the differences between these two dazzling gemstones. We've come to the end of our journey through the world of rubies and sapphires. We've delved into the vibrant world of these dazzling gemstones, each with its unique charm and allure. Let's take a quick stroll down memory lane. We've discovered that rubies, the king of gemstones, are primarily red. However, their hue can vary, blending with hints of pink, purple or orange. These variations in color are what make each ruby unique, giving it its own personality. But remember, the most prized rubies are those with a pure, vibrant red without secondary hues. We then explored the world of pinkish red rubies. These are rubies that have had their purplish traces removed, resulting in a lightened tone. While they may not qualify as rubies in the strictest sense, they still hold a special place in the spectrum of gemstones. Our journey then led us to the rare and extraordinary Padparadsha sapphires. These gemstones are a unique blend of pink and orange, creating a strikingly beautiful stone that is unlike any other. We also learned about the classification system of the Gemological Institute of America. They classify as rubies only those corundum gems with a dominant red hue. All other corundum is considered sapphire. We've seen that the hue of rubies can range from strong purple to intense red to an orange red. If the chromium generated color saturation is not sufficient to create a red color perception, the stone appears pink and thus becomes a pink sapphire. 
Finally, we discussed the importance of inclusions, colour and weight when choosing your gemstone. Some inclusions can add to the beauty of the stone, creating a ravishingly beautiful display of intricacy. We hope this exploration has brought you a deeper understanding of these two dazzling gemstones. Remember, the beauty of gemstones lies in their variations and uniqueness. Each stone tells its own story and holds its own allure. Please like and subscribe for more engaging, informative content. Until next time, keep sparkling.